What's going on guys, RBG here, back with another breakdown video for Marvel's Avengers, and man do we have a lot to go over from such a short video. You guys have been messaging and tweeting me about this, and I've been in the lab finding everything I could for you all, so hopefully you liked it. Now before we dive into today's topic, I just want to give a major shout out to all the YouTubers and journalists out there who've been keeping our hope alive for this game. It's obviously been a lackluster roller coaster ride with all the minimal details that have been scattered about on social media, and understandably so, many of the fans who were initially hyped for Marvel's Avengers eventually gave up on it. Thankfully, there were a handful of online influencers out there who showed up and provided all the details to persuade fans to stick around. So kudos to all of you guys, you are all living embodiments of true believers. But anyways, yesterday I woke up to some awesome news. A new video was uploaded to the official YouTube channel for Marvel's Avengers called Reassemble. And this video was essentially one of reassurance and hope. Reassurance that the developers are working around the clock to deliver an awesome experience for all the fans out there who haven't given up hope. The video was also shared on the game's official Twitter handle along with an exciting header saying, and I quote, We reassembled at home and are working to finish our mission. We can't wait to show you new gameplay and co-op in our first Marvel's Avengers War Table stream on June 24th. Hashtag reassemble. So the future has a lot in store for those patiently waiting for more updates. But anyways, one of the first things I want to break down are in regards to the awesome clip of the Hulk. As you can see, he's wearing his gladiator gear that originates from his comic, Planet Hulk. Over the years, this look has become very iconic, appearing in mainstream media such as the Planet Hulk movie adaptation as well as Thor Ragnarok. When we got a brief look at Hulk's alternate costumes at last year's San Diego Comic Con, there was one particular costume that I assumed was the Gladiator Hulk, but based on the action figure, it was later revealed to be Backyard Hulk. But thankfully, I did get the costume I originally thought we would get, which is the Gladiator Hulk. Something else I noticed during this brief little snippet was that the Hulk was beating down his arch nemesis, Abomination. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed that I saw this scene because it could potentially spoil the outcome of their battle. We see Hulk picking up what seems to be some kind of energy ball to finish off Abomination with. And I'm not sure what this thing could be, but it seems to be drawn to Gamma Energy since it essentially gets sucked right into the Hulk's hands. I'm pretty sure that a lot of fans agreed that this mysterious ball instantly brought back memories from the 2003 Hulk movie, where Hulk picks up a similar looking device and chunks it out of a lab. But moving on, another thing I noticed is that we may have gotten our first look at Hulk's Assault Heroic. In my previous video, I covered his other heroic abilities such as his Bone Shaker Support Heroic where he repeatedly slams his fist into the ground, and his Thunderclap Ultimate Heroic where he smacks his hands together to unleash a shockwave of devastating concussive force. We saw both of these superpowered abilities during the A-Day demo, but Hulk's Assault ability was nowhere to be found. But now it looks like we now have a visual of what it'll look like in action. If you notice during this scene, the Hulk starts glowing and readying his body before charging head on into what looks to be AIM robots. And it perfectly fits the description of his assault heroic which is called the Gamma Rush. An attack that allows him to quickly smash his way through a group of enemies using his Gamma Rush to become a human battering ram. We see this for a brief instance and don't see the aftermath to the heroic ability, but according to Marvel's Avengers Twitter handle, after performing Gamma Rush, Hulk will grab the first enemy encountered during the attack and slam him into the ground at the end of the charge, inflicting massive damage and staggering nearby opponents. That's gonna look super cool once we see it in action along with the beginning of this move. And something tells me that this ability is gonna be his second strongest heroic too, because you can wreck multiple enemies and stun everyone around you. And if you notice, Hulk seems to be enshrouded in this blue looking glow. Not sure what it is, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's some kind of buff he gets from performing one of his other heroic abilities. But moving on, we get another snippet of how Kamala Khan aka Miss Marvel's traversal will be. We got a brief instances of her sneaking around San Francisco in the game overview trailer, and we got another snippet featuring her roaming around in a canyon type area, and this trailer seems to follow up on that one. If you look closely, you'll notice that she's trying to find her way to the damaged helicarrier that'll serve as a hideout for the Avengers. I know a lot of fans aren't too high on this character, but I for one am looking forward to playing with her. She seems like she's gonna be an audience surrogate that shows what a fan would do if they were standing amongst their favorite superheroes. I mean, based on her comic origins, she is the Ultimate Avengers fangirl who's constantly drawing fan art of all her favorite members. So it's gonna be fun seeing what Crystal Dynamics does with their concepts of this character. Speaking of concepts, we see a few interesting looking pictures that seem to be concept character arts. In this one image, we see this mysterious looking blue character holding what looks to be a purple crystal. And I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that this guy is a Kree, because blue skin is a signature trait for that particular race, and according to the leaked trophy achievements for Marvel's Avengers, you'll have to defeat not only MODOK, but the Kree as well. 
Not sure what their actual role is in all of this, but I'm pretty sure it has something to do with the Terrigen Crystal and in humans. Given the fact that the Kree's goal was to use humans to create a powerful mutant race of soldiers for use against the Scrolls, I wouldn't be surprised if MODOK cut a deal with them to use the victims who were turned in humans after the big Terrigen explosion as test subjects. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if the Kree personally gave MODOK the Terrigen Crystal to not only sabotage the Avengers, but also create inhumans in the process. Speaking of MODOK, I would like to point out the small image we have of his human form, George Tarleton. We saw this particular iteration of the character introduced in the tie-in comics to the game, and he wasn't particularly high on Bruce Banner's relationship with Dr. Monica Rappuccini. At the end of the Hulk issue number one, he speaks with Tony Stark about a quote-unquote safe form of energy, and I'm assuming that that energy he's talking about was in fact the Terrigen Crystal that was used to power the Chimera Helicarrier at the A-Day event. But anyways, in another image, we see a full shot of the Abomination and what looks to be his human component, Emil Blonsky. As mentioned earlier, this character is most likely going to be a boss encounter for the Hulk. And considering the fact that this shot showcases his human form, he'll more than likely have an on-screen origin showing how he became this gamma-infused creature. And I wish I could pinpoint every little image shown in this trailer, but we have to move on to some of the other details. In the latter half of the trailer, we get the confirmation that we'll be seeing how the War Table will work. The War Table's live stream will feature new trailers for the game, as well as story missions and demonstrations of co-op gameplay. Considering how many times the game has been delayed, this may be an effective way for Crystal Dynamics to win over dedicated players and fans. Right off the bat, I just gotta mention how refreshing it is to see something other than the A-Day footage. This is definitely something that's gonna get some of the detractors to get back behind Marvel's Avengers again, seeing new footage of their favorite heroes in action. And we get a lot of brief shots of that in the form of co-op gameplay. And it looks amazing, man. In one shot, we see Black Widow fighting alongside Thor in what looks to be an AIM facility. And one thing that I noticed was that the Black Widow was absolutely violating one of the AIM bots with what seems to be an electrically charged bow staff. This looks like something that's gonna give her a special buff of some sort and it's gonna completely change her playstyle compared to that which we've seen in the A-Day demo. Once again, it's only right that I remind you guys that the combat designer for this game has stated that the combat system will be extremely robust, from traversal slash sprint attacks to alternate weapons to counters and other special attacks, all based off the hero and all different. So depending on which gear you equip on your hero, the way they fight and move will all change. This stuff for Black Widow looks like it's gonna imbue her suit with electrical energy and allow her to stun enemies. If you remember back in the Embrace Your Powers trailer, we got a brief scene of her using the staff on the ground, and now we get a shot of her using it in the air. Another shot we have is with Iron Man, and he looks like he's gonna be using his precision laser gear that was showcased briefly during the game overview trailer. We saw what it could do during his ground combat, but now we see what it can do while he's sprint flying with Iron Man. And I'm not sure if this will be possible, but it looks like you can also hold a button that will allow Iron Man to drag the beam across an area to damage multiple enemies. And I can imagine that this is going to be another one of those attacks that has a lot of stun as the game overview trailer suggests in regards to the heavy laser attacks. Considering the fact that the League Combat Designer mentions that you can even use any of Iron Man's weapons while sprint flying, I think it's safe to assume that this is in fact a sprint flying laser attack. Besides the flying aspects to this gear, we also get what looks to be one of his heroics you can perform with his lasers. And I think this will make any MCU fan happy as it's a reference to Iron Man 2 where Iron Man uses his repulsor beam weapon on all the hammer drones. It looks like this move is going to be just as devastating as it was in Iron Man 2 since you see it completely destroying nearby aim drones. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is an ultimate heroic. Something else that I noticed is that there will be up to at least three members you can join forces with at once as seen during the snippet I mentioned regarding the Iron Man's laser strafing. Besides Iron Man, you see the Hulk and Miss Marvel fighting alongside him. Now the last thing I want to break down are the brief looks we got at the costumes, some of which we've already seen during the character spotlight trailers but not in action. We got to see Iron Man's alternate costumes in the form of the Star Boost and Sin armor and what looks to be one of the early Iron Man armors. I thought it was the Iron Will armor that was featured at the end of the Embrace Your Powers trailer, but after taking a closer look I realized that it's actually the prototype armor that was shown during the game overview trailer. Another noteworthy alternate costume we get a brief look at is for Thor. And it's a slightly altered version of his standard costume, but it features his traditional helmet and chainmail. I'm a little befuddled as to why the devs didn't make this his official look, because the chainmail going along the arms makes the costume look complete. 
Not to mention that the helmet has become one of the most disregarded concepts since the Ultimate Thor run and the MCU. We only saw him wearing it in Thor 1 at the beginning of the movie and never saw it again after that. So it's nice to see Thor wear it in a more modern costume. But with that, I'm gonna end this video. What do you guys think about all of these details? Did this recent trailer revamp your hype for Marvel's Avengers? Or do you think waiting till June 24th to get more updates is too far? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on future videos. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.